So uh, we're going to start with a quick coordinate plane review, and then we're going to move on to the new stuff. So real quick review. Coordinates on a uh, coordinate plane are always going to be x, y coordinates. Always have to be in that order. If you flip the order, it flips the place. And that's important to uh, wrap your head around because math is communication. These reference specific places on the coordinate plane, okay? The other thing I want to review with you is that these quadrants have numbers. First quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant, right? Wait, so it starts, it goes one... It goes one and then goes counterclockwise. Two, three... All right, so we're always going to start with the origin, right? And then left, right, up, down. So if I'm looking at point F, which is right here, I'm going left and down, correct? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go left two, which is negative two, and down three, which is negative three. Negative two and negative three has one unique spot on the whole coordinate plane, and it's right here where point F is. That's that spot. And it is in quadrant three. Quadrant three's points are always going to be negative, negative. You guys seeing that? You're always going to be negative, negative, the whole quadrant. So looking at number two, x, there's x. It's left and up, and that's going to be left 7, nope, 6, left 6, and up 3. That's that, it's the one unique spot that letter X is at, negative 6, 3. And that is in quadrant 2. So I'm going to let you guys do these next 6 on your own. Then I'll show answers, make sure we're all good on the same page. So take a minute, do these next 6. So checking over your answers, does anybody have any they need like to look at together? Is there any we need to look at together before I move on? Okay. So checking this one out, we're just gonna do with the reverse. Oh Dylan. How is R and three and five? Oh, R's and four. Thanks for saying something. R is in four. Perfect. All right. Over here, we're just going to do the opposite. We're going to take the coordinate and we're going to plot it. So remember, our ordered pairs are always going to be x, y, and I'm always eyeing the origin to start. So I start the origin. I'm either going left or right first, then up or down. So 2 and a half, 1 tells me 2 and a half on my x, 1 on my y. That put me right there for A. I start at my origin for B. I'm not going anywhere left or right. The y is 4, 0, 4 is right there. So I'm going to have you do the next 4, and we'll get back together on those. So none of these are the midpoint formula yet. I'm guessing on number 1 here, did anybody just say in the middle of negative 6 and 2 they kind of counted? Yeah. And they're like negative 2 is right in the middle? Okay, mm -hmm. that's true. Negative 2 is right in the middle of negative 6 and 2. That's true. Another, which other way worked to get that answer, though, Henry? Averaging it, right? Just like the trapezoids, right? To get the short end and the long end to be the same disk length, we averaged it. And if we did negative 6 plus 2 divided by 2, I get negative 2. Everybody cool with that? So negative 6 and 2, you can kind of see it, eye it. Maybe you don't average it, but that works, right? But looking at number 4. Oh, sorry, let's go to number 3 first. Number three, could you just pick out a spot in the middle very easy? Yeah. Really? Yeah. To get negative one and a half? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you did. Right. I found that one easier to add and divide by two to split it in half. Yeah. Looking at number four, though, could you eye that one? Mm -hmm. No, but again, we know we can find the average. And what's the average there? 28. 28, yeah. 56 divided by two is 28. So 28 would be the value right in the middle. So big idea. To find the value right in the middle, we can find the average, right? So number eight is also really fun. If A is negative 9, what would B have to be? 6. 6, because plus 15. And if this is 15, this also has to be 15. So 15 more than 6, C would be 21. So if I know where the midpoint is, I can find the other endpoint, right? Because 
Midpoint to end point would be the same thing as midpoint to end point. We know these both had to be 15 away, right? Okay, cool. So we're going to take this. Let me get to the right screen now. So if we got these two points, we want to know right in the middle. On the number line, what did we do? We found the... Yeah, but the, how, average. the average, right? Yeah. Now, the challenge with coordinate plane is there's not just a number line. There's a, like a double number line, right? So I need to find the average this direction and the average that direction, right? Are you seeing that? If I find the middle here and the middle here, they would, they would cross somewhere right there. Now, the math and the big idea of average is the same. I'm going to find the middle left to right and the middle up and down. Are you guys seeing that? I want to know the middle left to right, the middle between them, and the middle between them. Right? So here's the equation. I'm going to write it, and then I'm going to talk about it, because the equation is all I've just been saying. It's nothing new. So see those subscript numbers? Those little numbers? That, that's not like actually computation. Let me make this one look a little better, actually. It's like a little two below it. And what that means is, these points can be labeled as point one and point two. That's all those twos are. They're not some like weird different exponent. It's just referencing the points. This is point one. Uh, I, I even wrote that one wrong. It's x1, y1. And this here is point two. That's all that means. So this, this big fancy looking equation, all it's saying is the average of my x values and the average of my y value. So that's how I have it stashed upstairs. And you add those together? No, those are your, you need an ordered pair to give you your new point. So what it would look like in the formula here is a 1 plus 5 divided by 2. That's my x's. And a 2 plus 5 divided by 2. And that's an average of my y's. In the middle on the x's, in the middle on the y's. That's all this is. So that gives me 3, 3 and a half. That would be my midpoint. And so a good idea to check it. So I go three, three and a half is that point there. Does it pass the eye test? Yeah. yeah. I think it does. So to rewind that, we've got two points. I'm averaging my x values and I'm averaging my y values to get me the point that's right in the middle. And what does the point in the middle say to the other points, everybody? Why don't you just meet me Hi. in the middle? Yeah, there you go. I had like three people at least. That's good. Cool.